Thank you. So hi everyone. As you remember that yesterday we were talking about the computational PTMs. And today's tutorial, we will go through this uh, phospho SDY uh, table from this study, and we will see how we can analyze on the Perseus. But before we go, as like on the kitchen, I let's prepare our Perseus table. So in order to analyze your uh, PTM studies on Perseus, we need to have actually two additional information on your Perseus program. So what you need first, you need to have annotation files and you can download these annotation files here on the Perseus tools and annotation download. And the people here, uh, we already put it on the USB sticks, so you don't need to download. But for the specifically for phosphorylation, the phosphocyte, you need to have the phosphocyte plus data sets. So as you remember yesterday, I was referring this website. So it has a lot of, it has a lot of information about the phosphorylation, not only phosphorylation, but also other PTMs. And then here we have download top, and then we just go to the data set from PSP. Uh, yes, on Wednesday evening, we sent an email regarding to this because we don't, we are not allowed to distribute the data set. You have to, download it by yourself. And for this tutorial, from here, you need to have phosphorylation site data set. When, when you also want to analyze the kinase related information, which I forgot to send yesterday, sorry for this. So you also need to have the kinase substrate data set. So it will not be showstopper for us to analyze the data set. You don't need to worry, but later on, when you want to analyze by yourself, make sure that you have all the available, all the required uh, phosphocyte plus data sets. So now we prepare our uh, per sales thing. And then where we, what about this data set? So you may not hear about the MaxQB. So MaxQB was like a, our Max Planck Institute of Biochemistry Pride. So it was in the beginning, we were using it quite some time. So we were uploading over there with some of the data set. And you can go to the MaxQB Biochem MPG, and then you can put this uh, information, and then you will get the details about the uh, Sharma et al. the phospho data set. And then here you could also go to the phospho STY and then dive more into the, the data set itself. So here, if you didn't have the data already on your USB sticks, you could have gone this website and get the data set, but the participant here, you don't need to go to this website now. Later on at home, you could check this MaxQB, what we have and how you could use it, but this is, I'm aiming for like uh, Zoom people. So our data set is like relatively large scale label free phospho uh, and phosphoproteomics experiment. And the data set that we are gonna analyze now has three condition, uh, three, uh, yeah, three condition. And the first one is a control sample where there was no enrichment was done. And the second one was the mitosis. And then we have a lot of enrichment. We have a lot of phosphorylation events happening. And the third one is uh, epi epidermal growth factor stimulated. Uh, some phosphorylation events is happening over there. So we have two additional condition in addition to control. And yeah, if you want to know more about the paper and study, please refer this paper to, this was the original paper since uh, I'm always referring that. Yesterday, I didn't explain uh, what MaxQuan generates when you have phosphorylation on the output tables. So we have phospho SDY TXT files, and these TXT files has some special, some special information for the modification. So here I listed the things that are very specific for the PTMs. So we will go through about this intensity underscore one, one intensity underscore two, and intensity underscore three. These are about the uh, a quantification intensity values for the sample and the site. If it is singly phosphorylated peptide, 
then it will be underscore one. If our peptide has two modification, it will be intensity underscore two. If our peptide of this intensity will be have three or more, then we will have intensity underscore three. So in addition to this three side of intensity information, we also have the localization probability. You may remember the formula from the paper and we will have the global localization probability for this. That will be important for us because uh, there are some studies going on and then they say that 0 0.75 uh, cutoff is a good, highly uh, confident PTMs. These are also called as class one. So another one is the amino acid information. So which, um, which residues is actually modified? And we also have the sequence window. And current version, we have 15 amino acids. So this is the some sequences before and after of your uh, modified residues. And we also have the position information, which is like, what is the, num what is the residue number of these modifications occurring? And we will see that all the PTMs related analysis can be found under the modification tab, which is here. So we will go through the, so far, like all of uh, several of my colleagues already did the pipeline. So we will have some uh, consensus over there and we will add some modification specific information on top. And this is the overview, how we are gonna analyze. The beginning, we will prepare our data set. Uh, what I refer, like, uh, we will re remove the reverse, we will remove the contaminant, rename some of the column, and then after log transformation, we will do expand site table. It's highlighted in red because this was a modification specific integration on Perseus. So here we will, uh, we will put all this intensity underscore one, underscore two, and underscore three in one uh, each row. From, the, from column, they will become a row. And then we will uh, define experimental group and uh, we will keep the high confident ones. How I keep the high confident ones? Localization probability bigger than 0 0.75. And again, we will do the key valid values and input missing values. Later on, we will do some statistic tests, multiple sample tests because we had three conditions and uh, three, several proteins there. And then we will keep only significant ones. As always, before the clustering, we do the z-scoring and then we will export our clusters. And the last step, we will do the modification specific steps. And then here we add some linear motif on known sites and kinase substrate relation information. For every of them, we will do the enrichment, which is Fisher exact test. And I suggest you during our Perseus analysis, please save your session almost every important step because it might be just crashing at one point. Uh, so, but you don't want to lose your thing. So. Thank you. And then I will now go to the session. So here, so I will keep this one too, just for us to remember where we will be. But before, so let's check if our Perseus, says Perseus is actually ready. So where I will go, I will go bin and conf, and I will go to annotation. Bin, conf, annotation. So I have my homo sapiens information here. So I won't have any problem when I want to edit. It won't be in, like, it won't be really stop you, but it, you will just lose some time probably if you didn't prepare your sample uh, per se in the beginning. And then I will also check the config folder for PSP. So the phosphorylation sites plus phosphocyte plus data set must be PSP folder. So you must have them here, not just under conf, conf PSP. 
In ideal scenario, you will first check and then if everything is okay, you will click on the persist executable, but let's click now. Okay, so this was the session that I created according to what I show on the PowerPoint. So like in case, like I just want to keep it here to show you and then I save it, but now I will start a new session. And where is our file? Our file is under pro, uh, practical form modifica uh, modification folder. And here we have phospho SD Y site executable, uh, sorry, text file. And then we click on the generic matrix upload. Okay, I have the Fosfo SDY site text file that come from MaxCon for this uh, Charma et al. data set. And in the beginning, what we need this intensity underscore for every condition. So I choose from control one, C1, and control two, and control three, and control four. Plus I will choose also E15, all the samples and also the mitosis ones. I, I just don't want it to uh, control condition. It will be fine, uh, a data because we still have enough control sample. And this intensity underscore one, two and three, they will go to the main column. And if you remember on this here, we have intensity underscore one, two, and three, but we also have important localization probability. And our localization probability is here, is a numerical. And then we also need amino acid information. It's here. These are just too good to see when you upload the file, like what am I actually uploading? And the sequence window is the text because it's, it's not like yes and no, it's not the... And then the position. Position is here. And after we check we have the right data set, we say, okay. and it's uh, loading. And what I also like doing it, renaming. So I right click on the matrix name and I say initial. And I save my session. Okay, so we load our phospho SDY TXT file from MaxCount. And what we do at the beginning, the preparing our data set. So we will remove 
are reversed. Filter role based on categorical condition. We say reverse, yes, and we want to remove them. And we also want to remove the contaminant. Contaminant and remove. And renaming the column. So here we go to rename column rejects, regular ex expression. And I write here intensity. And then here I could see the current it was saying intensity C uh, one underscore one, but I just remove the intensity part to make it shorter for me. Yes. And then I do the basics, log to transformation. So far, so good. Any no questions? Okay. And now it's our first time that we are going to use the modification related information, the expand, expand site tables. Here's the modification site, modification related per sales, and expand site table. The other cool things about per sales, when you go over it, with your cursor, you could see explanation. So what it says, underscore one, underscore two, and underscore three versions of MaxCon output table is rearranged in the matrix they, and became a single column for each. Okay. So now let's check before and after what happened on our matrix. So before we have 36 columns. And now we have 12 columns. What happened on this previous matrix? Let's make this bigger. So I have this underscore one, two, and three for the first control. And it's the same for the second control and so forth. And what happened on the matrix six? I only have one column for the control sample one. And uh, the, for C, control sample two is also the same. And where does this underscore one and two goes is here, multiplicity information. And so let's also have a look at our data set. Like I was referring that we have localization probability so we could see they are a lot, but we have, we have they are ranging from 0 0.5 till 1. And then what, I, what else I have? I have leading proteins, and I have the sequence window. And this is the, it was serine, was phosphorylated. And I can verify this information on this amino acid column. The first row of the amino acid column is serine. And on the sequence window, serine will be in the middle. And then we will some right and left some expanded sequences. And, and we have another unique identifier. It will be important to merging the data set later not the identifier because it uh, it must be like unique when we do the merging. Okay, before uh, we do the defining experimental group, so we go to the annotation role, categorical annotation role. And then we know that this four sample comes from the control and we choose them. And then we go here right click no click and then say c and the other one is e15 and the last one is n
So let's save the Perso session. And let's rename it. Okay, so we did the simple, like the beginning, what we used to do, like we clean up our data set and we prepare it. And before continuing, we will keep this high confidence site. And to do this, we go to filter row. And we choose the numerical one because probability is the numeric value. And then here we define the relation. And so here our X is the localization probability. It's what I want to do, but it might be possible that it was not right one selected for you. Just triple checking, not double checking if it's localization probability. And then we write the equation X bigger than 0.75. And we reduce the matrix. So let's have a look before and after. Before I have almost 180,000 rows. And now I have 124,000 rows. And like, because I filter a bigger than 0 0.75, let's have a look if it's really happened that way. So I go to localization probability. And then the minimum is 0 0.75. And if I scroll down, I will see it goes to one. I save again my session. Okay, so this was also the second modification related uh, steps on Perseus, keeping site with high confidence. And then now we again repeat the same, like well, keeping the valid values and impute the missing values. We filter rows based on valid values. So here it depends on what, how you want to analyze your sample. So far we have shown all uh, like 70% in total. So it's possible that you could choose number of uh, condition wise, or you could also choose each group or it is one of your sample. You should check out which one is more proper for your experiment. And then we reduce our matrix. Okay, we also did the keep the valid values. Now we do the imputation. So we go to imputation and then we say impute from normal distribution. There are some already default settings. So we use them at the moment. And it's always important to check how the distribution looks when you did the imputation because we don't want to have binomial distribution. We don't want to change the distribution after adding the missing, uh, adding imputed values. So it looks, it's almost good. There are some over here for this purpose of it. We can just ignore this. This is not so bad. But for your cases at home, you could play with these values, this down sheet and the window. And you could also play with some other, like when you have R installed this impute as CMD. And so this is, I mean, it's nice to, you can play with values to see how your data set is behaving the most, uh, like doing the best for your analysis. So as you remember that we choose from here, selection from imputation to see this red distribution. 
we say. And we prepare our sample. We prepare our data set. Now we will do some statistical tests. So the first we do the multi sample test. We go here, multi sample test. We don't change anything. Ah, there's another thing I want, to, uh, I just remember. So, so let's put these two sides. So now we prepare our table, right? We prepare our data. So we are ready to start the statistical test. So there's a new feature in the uh, Perseus. So because we add the categorical on a kit on it, like, so. So this was our initial. So we only have one uh, annotation over that, the type. And after adding the groups, I have the second row. It's possible that you have a lot of annotation and it's possible that you want to hide some of them. So there's this A here. So if you click on this A, this is the what's actually in the moment show, like how many annotation I have and how many of them is in representation. In representation. So I can put this group side to the left and also like, and then you won't see it. For our purposes at the moment, because I only have group edited, so I don't need to use this function. But one of our studies, we have a lot of annotation so we wanted to hide them. We have like 10 different annotation row over there. So for such cases, you can use this function. This going to A and shifting left and right. I again save my session. I will do the now statistical part, multi-sample tests and keeping significant ones. So I did the test here, multi sample. This is my matrix. And now, so future role, categorical, another significant, and keep. I want to keep the significant ones. And then later, I do normalization and perform cluster. Normalization comes from here. D score. And I want to do it raw. So all the sites, protein site specific information, every like condition and the other experiment, I want to able to compare them against each other. And there's nothing, nothing else I need to change now. So I make the Z score and I do the clustering. These are the default values. So you could also play with the linkage and the distances. But when I also do this here, the cluster looks good. So what we want, like the clusters happening from in the middle, making like diversion from that. We don't want like starting from here, there's one cluster and then going all the way here. So this, this visually, it looks nice for us. It looks uh, good. And so here, these are the protein inside information and here's our uh, samples. So these are the mitosis. This is the growth factor and these are the control. So let's say that we define the role and we say six. Or 
or we could also say four because it looks like this is actually one cluster, this red one. So I can change again, make it four. And instead of clicking OK, I could also apply. So it will immediately apply on the spot and I could see it and then OK and close this. So four cluster looks good. And then I could also define the column cluster to see how it happens. I want to try with three because I have three different condition now. And all of them are like mitosis together, growth factor together and the control group are together. Okay. Yes, so now we will export our cluster and then we mesh the rows to the, we will add this export cluster to our uh, data set. How do we export the cluster? Here, export row clusters. And when we export this, that will be the cluster in for, uh, column. Yeah, the clusters. And now I want to merge this data on the right, uh, before we do this, no. Uh, before we do the filtering to keep the only significant ones because I want to check all the information without filtering the significant ones. And then here on this column, mesh rows by name, the base one, the mother matrix, which one? This one, 15, 11 to 12, so yeah, 11. And then we go to the which one I want to add, 14. And later on, I will see what I want to add. I want to add the cluster information. It comes to here. And how I will do the matching. And then we don't do the matching by proteins because protein is redundant information here. And what we want to use is unique identifier is here. So we change two things. We change how we are matching the columns and then what we are adding from the other matrix to the base matrix. And then we say, okay. So now I have information about significance, uh, sig significant or not. And also I have the other information about the cluster. So we could explore more on this time, but now let's add some more information in here. So add annotation. So I go to annotation column, I say add annotation, and I want to add from go terms, um, homo sapiens information. It comes from our Perseus bean conf annotation uh, file. This is where it's been called now. This folder, now we are using this on this step. And I want to get some of this information and I add it to the right and okay. I save again my Perseus session and we do the, like they show before the Fisher exec test. And I want to see the enrichment within cluster aspects. So I change here to cluster. Yes. And enrichment will be a, pro a deleting protein because yeah, we want to count the protein only once, not two times.
and it takes some time now. So if I don't have enough time, we, I have five minutes. So I will also send this session to you. It was the yeah on the other one. Here, here I edit what I was planning to do. So I edit this annotation and this was the Fisher exact test. And then here I check uh, what about the clusters, which cluster has been enriched for the, what kind of uh, biological relevance. Like, Like ideally I could, I know that this was like on this cluster, this was the mitosis and this part, I couldn't go, I couldn't find the name, the name of the cluster. And I click on it to see which one was the name. So this one, so I will, I, I noted somewhere else this number and I will check on my matrix where it, what is saying to me this uh, on the annotation wise. So I go to my matrix. I sort by the cluster. And I'm sometimes not good memorizing. So two, three, three. So here, we could see which find, uh, what kind of um, biological process this uh, cluster where we see upregulation of the mitosis event is actually involved, like the signaling, RNA processing, and cell signaling, and how I know the number, the colors, what the colors is presenting. So here I click on this and then I could see the positive intensities are shown as red. They are the upregulated. And then I put this, the dark one in the middle. And then I also put the same level, this green one. And these are the green ones are downregulated. So we did the our Fisher exact test on the annotation, go annotation, but on the matrix we go to here, and then we say it's linear motif. So for this one, we only need, as it's written here, on the under the config file we have motif. Uh, text files. This was evolved like gradually in the lab. And we use this information. We don't change anything. And now we add the motive related information based on the sequence window. And again, we do the Fisher exact test. And this, another one was known site. So when we go over known site, it's also say that sites that are now in the phosphor site plus. And then here, if you try the people who don't have the phosphor site plus data set, it will not work. But in my case, it will work. Modification, known site. You might have er error like saying the file not exists. It's not crashing, it's not doing anything, just saying that you have to find the right file. And again, we do the Fisher exact test. And for the kinase, here we get the information from kinase substrate data set. So I go again the the merge table. And I add this. So for me, it's not complaining, but probably for some of you, it's complaining, saying that it's not exist, but yeah. Yep. 
yeah, these are the ones that I wanted to show you. So then you do the Fisher exact test and then find the enrichment. And yeah, that's all. Thank you.